Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Recently shared a tutorial on Traversy Media, thanks to Brad, and you can click that link above right now if you haven't seen it. What I want to talk about today are the comments, and I realized as I read the comments there were also questions. And this is very similar to courses I teach online at university, and I encourage students to ask their questions in the forums rather than just email me directly, although I always allow that because they may want privacy or may be embarrassed, and I don't want to prevent anyone from asking a question. However, comments in a YouTube section are kind of like an online forum in a classroom, especially when it comes to tutorials. You could ask a question, and of course I respond, and I thought, hey, this is a great learning opportunity. So I don't usually do reaction videos or anything like that. I just do tutorials. But in this case, I thought it might be good to go through and react and or answer some of the questions that I've been asked. Because usually, in my experience as an instructor, when one student asks a question, several others probably have that same question in mind, if not a question that is very similar. So let's go over some of that today. First line of code has accessibility consideration for the win. I'm a vanilla JS guy, but what interested me most was the accessibility stuffs, stuffs and tests performed at the end. Love all the accessibility callouts. The vanilla JS and accessibility were the most impactful for me. Hey, thank you very much. Accessibility is very important to me, and it's great to see so many people appreciate the accessibility that was in this tutorial. Hey, I'm trying to follow along. Any chance you could paste the entire Wikipedia link? Edit. Never mind. Found it on GitHub in the JavaScript file. I hope the entire link for the Wikipedia API that I created in the app was available in the tutorial, and I think it just wrapped to a second, possibly a third line, because it is fairly long. And I did break down that whole Wikipedia API link construction as well. However, if you got confused or had a hard time finding it, it is in the repository that is linked to on GitHub. So just look in the description of the video. Maybe I missed it when I was scrubbing through, but why did you prefer to write the search focus part in JavaScript instead of setting the autofocus attribute in the search input element? That's a great question. And really the answer is there's no set reason why I did that. The uh, autofocus attribute would work when you load the app. However, I'm in the habit of creating a focus function because I like to call it possibly at other times in the app. So I just kind of out of habit used it at the load time as well. And that's usually what I do in the apps I create. However, the autofocus attribute is fine and possibly a better solution, at least at the load. Excited to try this project. Can anybody please tell me what the responsive web design emulator that he's using? And then what Chrome extension does he use to have an actual phone on the browser? Two separate questions about the same thing. So I demonstrate the search app in a phone and an iPad view and I like to do that in Chrome DevTools, honestly. There's no special extension, there's no special emulator. It's just Chrome DevTools. Open that up, and then you click on an icon that looks like a little phone and an iPad kind of overlaid. And once you click on that, and that icon is by the tabs, like where you'd see the console tab and the elements tab. Once you click on that, it'll bring up an area that has the drop down list of different phones and devices. From there, just over to the right, click on the three dots, and those three dots will say show device, um, I want to say frame, show device frame, and then once you're showing the device frame, it will say hide device frame, so you have the option to toggle between. And they do not have it available for all phones. It's just certain phones that you bring up in the Chrome DevTools view, and of course tablets as well, that will show the frame of the device. I should add, I like to do that because of responsive web design and you really want to design for the smallest screens first and work your way out. More viewers than ever, more site visitors will be using a mobile device, probably well over half at this point. No. 
As a JavaScript newbie, I don't get this project. I know all the syntax and stuff, but I just don't get the point of calling so many functions within function. And then we could just clump all of that together in a single function at times. So if anybody understands this type of code writing, please reply to this comment. Well, this type of code writing is really me trying to adhere to the single responsibility principle whenever possible. And that single responsibility principle is one of the solid design principles, actually the S in solid, that's an acronym. And what you wanna do is just make each function do one thing if possible. And then of course you have to have what I call a workflow function or a procedural function to basically pull all of those single responsibility functions together so they can do something in order. And of course, how you name the functions is also very important because you want to name them so it makes sense. You're really writing code for the people that follow you, that try to understand your code or have to maintain it after you've maybe moved on to another job. So don't make it rough on them to figure everything out. Name your functions according to what they do, even if it's a little longer function name, and your code will document itself. So as you work through what I would call a workflow function and read all of the smaller functions that are adhering to the single responsibility principle, your code will document itself, like go to the store, buy milk, buy eggs. It should be about that simple to read. SAS was new to me, but followable. The tutorial was a marathon, but it was very interesting. Hey, thank you. I do understand it was a long tutorial. Uh, and really, I wanted to add more to it, but that's why I said at the end, you know, there's more we could add. We could probably always go on, but that could be added later on. Maybe I could do a second version of this and add on some of the extra features. At the same time, it's always good to challenge students, so add what you want to add. Now, SAS, of course, that to me just makes CSS easier once you get the hang of it. So it just, it really is like writing CSS, but it's a has a few features that makes it easier and I really tried to ease you into that. So hopefully that helped. And of course, watch more tutorial videos that I create and we'll continue to work with SAS as well. I'm impressed by this. The code is all so well organized and the explanations are great. Well, thank you, and I'm glad you like the explanations. And at the same time, this other comment says, it's basically just watching typing, not much explanation. Nevertheless, nice project. Well, I do hope I explain things well. I certainly try to, but I understand my teaching style isn't for everybody. Some things click with some students and some things click with others. And that's why so many tutorials and so many people teaching are great. Everybody has a different style of teaching and of learning, and you've got to go with what works for you. So I understand both opinions here. Dave, I like this project and especially like that the top of the list for who is this guy is father. Keep broadcasting. Thank you very much. That's important to me. And well, I've got three great kids, and I think it makes me a better teacher. Of course, that's my goal. Usually is be the person you needed when you were younger, and that's what I try to do, and I think being a father helps me with that as well. I enjoy teaching also, so thank you for the kind words. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, once again, I'd like to thank all the new subscribers and Brad at Traversy Media for allowing me to share that search app tutorial to begin with, and I've got a lot of great content coming up this year, so keep following. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that now. And I will see you soon.